What's up guys? I've posted this body a bunch on Instagram and on a couple YouTube live videos trying to figure out what color to do. This is a beautiful, beautiful quilted maple top from Kimball Hardwoods. It's an Iceman body that I made with a western cedar and back. It's got uh, some turquoise binding and I actually had to tape this down so I keep it in the camera angle on the top. This is such an enormously wide body. These are really hard pieces of wood to come by. This is a guitar body I made myself. It fits a standard tally neck pocket. And we're gonna do an awesome tiger's burst. There is a ton of figure running through this. I did crack the top right there and I re-glued it, but just kind of disclosing everything before I get started. A little bit of grain run out there, but I think with this black and brown that I'm going to use, it's going to look awesome. Got an old t-shirt, it's been washed hundreds of times, gets all the fuzz out. And then I've mixed 50-50 Angelus dye, Angelus leather black and dark brown. And the reason I use those colors is because I get a real thick coat, really deep dark coloring. That way when I sand out... I got a little bit of dark brown, a little bit of black. It gives me a little bit more covering. This will go on black, but has a ton of brown. You can see the brown in it as I'm putting this on. I have taped the body on the sides so that I don't get any drippage. And we're gonna put uh, about three coats on here and make sure it soaks in. This is a beautiful top from Kimball. I think this is one of the better tops I've gotten from him. There's the crack. Can't see it with the stain. Perfect. I uh, will come around the corner here. That's the first coat. We'll dip for the second coat. You can see this is not just total black. It's got enough brown in there that this should really help. Still getting over the flu. But I wanted to do another video for you guys. So that's three coats, it's soaking in pretty good. A little splotchy in a couple spots, had a little bit of run out right there so it'll show up darker. Not sure if I'm gonna do a, like a bursted edge or if I'm just going to stain it and leave it. Haven't figured that out, but we're going to let this dry for 24 hours, sand it off and come back and finish this up. So we're now going to sand off the black and brown with my Makita Orbital Sander 320 grit sandpaper and we're going to sand this down. Do this for about five minutes in total. I use that open grit sandpaper which makes a huge difference in dust collection. This is some naphtha so you can see what the stain looks like without having it all on. So if I just sanded it back, this looks really cool. The naphtha cleans the wood, but does not leave a residue. Really neat looking stain at this point. If I didn't have that binding on, I would have left it. So then we're going with Angelus Leather Dye Orange. And it got really splotchy real quick, right where I had my finger. And my camera wasn't working, so I just fast forward to this because I'm going to end up sanding this off. It, it's a little bit too dark and with that dark it is splotchy. You can't really see it in this angle but there's a couple spots that I was really unhappy with. So we let that dry for 24 hours and then we start the steel wool trick to see if it actually does anything and it doesn't. It doesn't pull up some of that splotchiness so we go ahead and start sanding it and then we pull out the power sander again and sand it off one more time. We'll go back live in video here and show you how I figured out the right color to get Tiger's Eye. Alright, so I applied orange to this and it got really splotchy and I didn't like 
the way it looked. So I sanded this all out. Um, there was splotchiness right there and there. And then the binding was loose right here. So I had to sand a little bit more of that out. And when I was experimenting with the orange, it has like a little bit of red in it. And I just didn't like the way it looked. And then when I applied the brown and the yellow, I thought that looked better. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pass on the orange and just do brown and yellow. And I think that's the better tiger's eye version. So we've got, again, old cut up t-shirt. We're gonna go with brown first. I got clean rags. We're gonna apply two coats. We're gonna try and not apply too much dye this time because it is getting a little splotchy. But that um, brown and black really helped highlight it. You can see I'm getting a little bit different coloration right there and you can see the splotchiness popping. Not too happy with this. It's not as dark as I would like. I feel like I, I want it just slightly darker. So two coats actually. As long as it's not really soaking up the dye, I think this looks right. There is splotchiness right there. I'm gonna try and avoid that. Hey, hey, Mora, I'm filming. All right, then we're gonna come back with the yellow. Should get it to pop. Like so, that's it. Gives it more just of that tiger eye look. And there's no red then. It's weird how that works, huh? There's a lot of brown getting pulled up in this. This body's so big hard to get the color in consistently. <laughs> I've not experienced that before. The tellies, I don't need that much space. All right, so adding the yellow pulled that splotchiness out. I guess it's the darker color that is causing the issue. Getting a little bit of off coloration on the side. Just move it around. Right here where I had that burnout, I got a little some weird coloration issue. All right, that looks Outstanding. It could be a tad darker, um, but that darker stain is leaving some blotchiness, so I'm not sure that would work. So the trick here now is to let this dry for 24 hours. And we'll come back with the steel wool. Steel will help just pull whatever color is on the top and just get it to pop slightly. So we'll be back. This is some Mohawk sanding sealer, first coat. This top is gorgeous, really great coloring. You could just see it pop here as I am applying the sanding sealer. Really nice coloring, nice even. As the first coat, really light. Second coat, actually the can was spitting on me. And so what I did is I put a little bit of a heavier coat and then I sanded it just slightly and then put another coat on. So I actually had multiple issues with this, but sanding 
with the sanding sealer on with a couple bubbles, essentially, sort of like heavy sprays, I got it clean and then came back with a real heavy coat to sort of blend it in. But what a pain. <laughs> but it looks outstanding. All right, so we put a first coat of true oil on then. Nice thick coat, front and back. We let it dry for 48 hours. Want it to harden up so the stain just, or the true oil just doesn't keep soaking in. So we do a nice heavy coat, let it sit for 20 minutes and then wipe it off. And then we put another coat on, and then another coat, and another coat. And then I've got some 600 grit sandpaper here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna wet sand with that sandpaper. And what this does is it knocks down any fuzz. It evens out the coat. So sanding finds any of the high spots, low spots, and just sort of fills it in. This sort of, sort of is like a f pore filler. And it works really well. My brother taught me this trick. And I've done it in a bunch of videos. But it fills in any pores, any high, low spots. Gets the coat nice and even. And then you put one more coat on after it, and it just pops. Trick with true oil, guys, is make sure you have fresh bottles. Do not use the big bottles unless you're finishing a ton of stuff. The bottles go bad. I really don't like having big bottles. I've gone to many bottles. So after we're done wet sanding, we wipe it off, let it dry, and then we come back with one more coat. I did not film that here. We'll go back live in video. What's up guys? This Iceman came out outstanding. Had a little bit of some splotchiness issues. That happens from time to time, but once I went with a lighter color with not as much dye, you don't get the splotchiness. This is about five coats of true oil. You can see it's starting to build to a nice gloss. The only problem when you get with the extra coats like this is it's starting to be a little bit streaky. And what that means is I gotta go over it one more time with the steel wool and then hit it with one more coat and buff it. Once you buff it, all of these sort of uh, scratch marks from applying it, I guess finish swirls, you could call it, come out. The back is interesting. I didn't think I'd like true oil on Western Cedar, but it came out really nice. It's got a neat look. Since the Cedar has a natural wave pattern, I really like it. The binding matches the top perfectly. I did want it just a little bit darker but interesting project. I'll do one more coat on this and then we will actually sell this one. So stay tuned on selling this one. This is not a giveaway. This is going to be for sale, but a beautiful, beautiful Iceman project with a tiger's eye stain quilted maple from Kimball Hardwood. So thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next video.